of course she did when she went when her husband was on the throne but she still has power behind the scenes she's influencing the king according to the template of the mystery of the kings the one who reigns now will be a man and he will be a younger man than the queen so what so that brings us to the next template and the next king now after the end of ahab's reign the one who reigns are the sons of Ahab. The first one, Ahaziah, is cut off just as the reign begins. The central successor of Ahab is a king named Jehoram. King Jehoram. Some of your Bibles say Joram. The Bible says he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Jehoram, for the most part, continues the evil of his father. Unlike Ahab, he, doesn't, he didn't pioneer the changes, but he continues the course of evil. He continues Israel's descent. In many ways, he takes up where Ahab leaves off. Barack Obama was the political son of the Clintons. And let me show you. First of all, his political career began under the reign of the Clintons. Began in, 19, in the 1990s, in the, in the same election that brought Bill Clinton back to power. 1996 brought Barack Obama to power for the first time. For the most part, he was unknown. He was, he was the, not, a regular, not a U.S. senator, he was a state senator in Illinois. Pretty much nobody knew him at all. And the, but it all changed in the Democratic Convention in the middle of, of in, 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 uh, in mm -hmm. the early 200, well, as it comes up, the same convention, interesting, that would nominate Kerry and John Edwards. Now, John Edwards, a few, right after the convention, is the one who would proclaim the Harbinger Scripture, Isaiah 910 mm -hmm. on 9-11. Right after that, he's the one who made that speech, the bricks have fallen. He made his entire speech centered on Isaiah 910. That same convention, was the beginning of the rise of Barack Obama, if you remember it. Jehoram, he continued the ways of Ahab, not all of them, but he continued it. Barack Obama would continue where Clinton left off. In fact, in fact, in his first days of office, he did exactly what Bill Clinton did. He, he signed the executive order, swept away all the protections for abortion, expanded abortion around the world in just the first days of That's exactly, the only, only president who did that was Clinton. So he signs the executive orders. Remember what the Clintons sought to do? They sought to nationalize health care. Obama begins where they left off. Jehoram was the, the son of Ahab. He's a political son of, of here, the Clintons. So they failed. He enacted health, he enacted the, the health, he nationalized health care and sought to get abortion in there. He even took Christian-owned companies to court to try to force them to pay for abortion, if you remember. Oh, this is what happened yes. in this. That's so right. the Clinton administration was the first administration oh. to seek to normalize homosexuality. The Obama administration took it to another level, pushing it to new extremes, breaking down the very definition of marriage, the overturning of marriage. And as did Ahab, Ahab moved Israel farther away from its biblical foundation, and so Jehoram did too. He, Obama was the first president in American history who said America is not or is not a Christian nation. That is exactly the template. Now, I saw something amazing in the first part was the exact days of Ahab. What about Barack Obama? When did Barack Obama's rise begin? When did he come on the national stage? Clearly, if there's no question, there's no debate about it. It clearly happened in the, with a Democratic convention. The, when was it? It was the summer of 2004. In November of 2004, he is elected to his first national office. January of 2005, he's sworn in in Washington at, as his first national position. It begins, when did his, his reign, when did his, when did his presidency end or come to an end? It came, the, the, the year that ended it was, November, was, was 2016 and the election of 2016. And then the final act was January, just happened, was Trump was the inauguration in January 2017. So what happens if you take the beginning of his Rise 2004, end of 2004, and then 2005, and go to the to the end of his presidency. It brings you to 12 years. 12 years from 2004 to 2012. 12 years from 2005 to to the inaugurate the both both inaugurations goes there. All right. Now, one other part of this we just spoke about Jehoram, but there's another part of this. It wasn't just in the days of Jehoram. It wasn't just Jehoram who was in the royal palace. There was someone else with him. After the end of Ahab's reign, Jehoram was in the palace with Jezebel. She dwelt in the palace, not as the queen, but as the former queen, not as the co-regent, but as the counselor, as one influencing the king there. When America, what happened, when Obama came into the White House, he didn't come alone, he brought in Hillary Clinton. 
And so now she, it could never happen under an, a Republican administration, but it happened the first Democratic administration after her, the, after her husband's reign, she was back in the White House according, in the, according, on the throne, by the throne, not on it, by the throne, according to the template. And she is influencing things there. And, and now, according to the template, Jezebel is considerably older than the king, Jehoram. Well, now, now Hillary Clinton is considerably older than the president, and the president, Obama, is considerably younger, just like Jehoram and Jezebel. And under, under Jehoram, Jezebel, and again, we have to pray for the people. They aren't the people, but they are in the template. Under Barack Obama, under this administration, America's apostasy continues in the areas of the unborn, just like with the worship of Baal, sexual immorality, God's order. And in 2011, Hillary Clinton tells, tells the nations of Africa that they all are going to have to change their standards concerning homosexuality, to impose it upon the world there. And as the, as the house of Ahab continues to usher in an age when, when believers are, are being attacked by the state, so more and more we've watched as believers are being attacked by the government, being boycotted, mocked, punished, fired, even put in jail in the same way. And then comes the election, as we bring it, of 2016, where we, as we get to where we've been. Hillary Clinton announces her candidacy for president. She is now all the more brazenly proclaiming abortion. Abortion from not only conception, but for the time, in effect, of birth. And now she's calling for the, for the striking down of the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment, remember, is the only thing that's protecting our money, tax money, going from paying for abortion directly so that your money, so that you're not paying for the killing of unborn Well, she is calling now, it's more brazen, for the striking down of that. And 11 days after she announces her candidacy, she goes to New York City and she makes a stunning statement. And here's what she, she says, remember, deep-seated religious beliefs must be changed. <laughs> Why? so that abortion can increase. Now, I cannot imagine a more Jezebelian statement. What was Jezebel doing? And again, we pray for her, but what was Jezebel doing? It was to seek to change the deep-seated religious beliefs of Israel. Why? So Baal worship could increase, which involved the killing of babies. Never had a major candidate for the presidency ever spoken of changing people's belief in the Word of God. In one statement, it's the most extreme thing ever, and it's being for religious liberty and for, and for babies. And had she, had, won, had she won, the Supreme Court would have been filled with those who would go along with it. Every single case for life, for religious liberty, for morality would have gone. And then comes the Democratic Convention. And they have the most brazenly anti-biblical platform in the history of America. And they also call for the striking down of the Hyde Amendment. As we mentioned earlier in the week, they all, for the first time, they're brazenly saying abortion. Before this, they wouldn't even, they would, they would try to kind of downplay it. But here, and at the same time, the Republican platform, here you're going to have a showdown now. The Republican platform was one of the most conservative platforms ever, upholding life, religious liberty, Israel, morality. Two visions, two futures, and many believers are preparing for days of persecution and a dark future as, and, and, and in the same way. And she is vying, and it looked like nobody could stop it because it seemed all the polls were saying the Democrats and their, the candidate the, would win, would win. But, but it was a very strange year this past year mm -hmm. with strange turn of events and a very different kind of man, <laughs> which brings us to the next template. President Obama, with all respect that is due, as you approach the last hour of the presidency, you were shocked by the outcome of the election, and now it appears that your legacy will largely be undone. You came to the presidency claiming as a Christian you could not support the ending of marriage as it had been known. And then you did everything in your power to end that very thing. And then you sought to force believers to take part in that very thing you said a believer could not take part in. If one believes that God is real, how can one do such things? You came to the presidency speaking of tolerance, and yet you showed no tolerance for the lives of the unborn. You zealously fought to defend the carrying out of their murder and expanded around the world. And you went farther. You sought to force God's people to fund their killing. 
President Obama, on the day when marriage as we know it, ordained by God, was with your help struck down in this land, you celebrated by lighting up the White House in the colors of the rainbow. Did you not know that the rainbow does not belong to man or to any movement? The rainbow belongs to God. It is the sacred sign of God's covenant and the sacred colors of his throne. If you believe that God is real, how can you use the sign of God to celebrate the striking down of the word of God? If you overturn the edicts of God, should you be surprised that your own edicts will be overturned? And if you strike down the precepts of God, will you not your own precepts be struck down? Do you launch accusations against the leader of Israel in a way you have never done to any leader of any enemy nation? You took part in isolating, condemning Israel before the world and advancing a resolution proclaiming Israel had no right to Jerusalem. If one has ever read the Bible, how could one foster such a thing? Did you miss what the Word of God says concerning Jerusalem? There is only one who has authority over Jerusalem. And it is not the United Nations. It is not the European Union. It is not you. There is only one, and his name is the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel. Long before there was a United Nations or United States or any of the nations that cast this vote, the Lord issued his own resolution concerning Jerusalem. And no law, no executive order, no UN vote will ever overturn it. And concerning that UN resolution, the Almighty has issued his own response. He vetoes it. 4,000 years ago, God made a covenant with Abraham that states, whatever you do to Israel shall be done to you. President Obama, you sought to intervene in an election held within the borders of a sovereign nation, Israel. Therefore, should you now be surprised if God intervenes in the election of your own nation? You sought through Israel's election to nullify the stands and legacy of its leader, Benjamin Netanyahu. So should you now be surprised if God intervenes now to nullify your own legacy? Despite how you treated the name of God, the word of God and the ways of God, the hand of God, this is the inconvenient truth. God is real, his word is true, his ways are eternal, his hand is mighty, his kingdom is without end, and the darkness shall not overcome it. Mr. President, I'm here to report to you good news. The God of Israel is alive and well, and his arm is strong to the rising up and casting down of kings and kingdoms and governments and administrations. If you don't think he can, to paraphrase your own words, yes, he can. Spoken at the inauguration. That was that was the hour of that was the hour of the inauguration. Yes, right. it was. In, in this Trump in Trump Hotel. In yes. Trump's hotel yes. in Washington, D.C., the yes. presidential inaugural prayer breakfast hosted by Mary Turner. That you were there at yes. the beginning. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. Second Kings 9. Okay. The prophet Elisha summoned a man from the company of the prophets and said to him, Tuck your cloak into your belt, take this flask of olive oil with you, and go to Ramoth Gilead. When you get there, look for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. Go to him, get away from his companions, get him away from his companions, take him to an inner room, take the flask, pour it, the oil on his head, and declare, this is what the Lord says, I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and run. Don't delay. So the young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. When he arrived, he found the army officers sitting together. I have a message for you, commander. He said, for which one of us, asked Jehu. For you, commander, he replied. Jehu got up, went into the house, then the prophet poured the oil on Jehu's head and declared, This is what the Lord God of Israel says, I anoint you, king over the Lord's people Israel. You are to destroy the house of Ahab, your master. I'll avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, the blood of all the Lord's servants shed by Jezebel. The whole house of Ahab will perish. I will cut off Ahab every last male, and it goes on. Then he opened the door and ran. So the prophet Elijah is now going to do what Elijah was told to do, which is to anoint a man called Jehu. Who was Jehu? He was a leader, but he was not a politician. He was a soldier. He was a fighter. He was in Jehoram's camp. He was, even before that, he was of Ahab's camp. He served Ahab. Now Jehoram is in Jezreel. Elisha sends one of the prophets, young prophet, to anoint him to bring an end to the house of Ahab, to bring judgment that Elijah had prophesied to Ahab in Jezreel. The phenomenon of Donald Trump, it defied everybody's expectations. 
It came out of the blue. The key behind him, at least up to this point, and we've heard Cyrus, and there's something there, but is the man called Jehu. Jehu is anointed to come head to head with Jezebel. It would come in the end down to Jezebel versus Jehu. The election of 2016 would come down to Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. At the time, Jezebel is older. She's a grandmother. So was Hillary Clinton. What about Jehu? What do we know? He's a leader. He's not a politician. He's a man of war. He's a man who gets into a lot of conflicts. <laughs> he's a man who he's not a gentleman. He's a rough man. He mounts his chariot and heads to the royal city. And he heads there to do, it's a race to the throne, like a race to the White House. He's racing. Sorry. The lookout reports. He says, it's the lookout who's at, in Jezreel says, look, we see something coming. What does it look like? He says, the driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nimshi, for he drives furiously. Hmm. <laughs> but let me tell you, it's even more than that. Yes, the race, the race to the throne by Jehu was furious. But, it's even, but the Hebrew is even more amazing. Because the, the word in Hebrew is shugah, which means crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump's race to the throne was crazy. Yeah. It also means insane and mad. I can't think of a better word to describe this campaign. And this and last thing. Jehu drives the chariot crazily to the White House. Well, well I'm sorry. <laughs> Trump did. But nevertheless, even though it was crazy, Jehu gets there. And the same with Trump. Even though it was crazy, he gets there. And at the same time, you know, listen, if I tell you, I'm not going to read all this, but it's amazing when I read the commentaries, this is what commentaries, old comment, pulpit commentary, all the 19th century, 20th century commentaries, not me, commentary, say about Jehu, he was ruthless, he was, but he was chosen by God. He was tenacious, he was furious, he would have occasional bursts of fury, it says, <laughs> almost fanatical zeal, there was personal ambition, but he was also used by God. This is what the commentaries are saying. He was chosen. I don't even have to say anything here. I don't have to say. Chosen to be used. God uses unlikely mm -hmm. vessels. Even he can use those who don't know him as well. And he uses those who come to know him. Yes. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. We put together this family gathering bundle. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? Yes. And it's only $450. Yes, sir. Right. And... And so that is a year and four months. Yes, sir. That is a, a tremendous saving. Mm -hmm. And when you get this food, you get the fruit variety bucket, 199 serving. You get a vegetable variety bucket, 109 servings. You get the gluten-free black bean bucket, 215 servings. You get the fiesta bucket, 196. That's that's the whole Mexican bucket. Yes, sir. Right. And then we have the French toast kit, which was just developed last Johnson. month. And so it's a $925 value. So you're going to save $475. And then you get this bonus of two boxes of each flavor of Frontier Bites. Right. And uh, so there's macadamia, pineapple, coconut. Mm -hmm. There's pecan, cherry, cinnamon. There's almond, blueberry, lemon. Yes. Mm. And so you get uh, how many boxes of that now? Two of each flavor. This is a special, special product mm -hmm. that's only going to be for this special week. That's mm. right. That's right. It's good. Okay. Now, you have the new meal extender. Yes. This is a John Shorey thing. This meal extenders is 1,837 servings. Good. That's the that's there's almost two years of food. Right, so. right. And extenders, they're like, put some water in the soup, Ma. <laughs> yes. Because we got company. That's you right. Know, and that's what extenders are. Yes. And I I think we ought to order one right now. I do too. This because is great. we've got lots of food stored away. Right. But when people drop in. Right. They can eat a lot. Well, well, the extenders <laughs> are, you have to add extenders. some, some right. extenders like okay, lentil, lentil bean bucket, which is 386 Ooh. servings. I could sing the hallelujah chorus. Uh, I, love, <laughs> I know I love lentils. I'm a lentil fan. It's true. They give me energy. Yes. Can't you tell? Yes. Okay, pinto beans. My, 432 this, servings. Yes. 
So then what's the next one? White rice bucket. How many servings? 405. Then what is this vegetable <laughs> stew mix? 388 servings. Yes. So then the potato slice bucket. Mm-hmm. So what can you do with a potato slice? Anything. Eat it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, whatever you want to do. You can fry it up. You can boil it. You can add it to stew, soups, whatever you want to do. Okay, so here we have the new meal extenders. These are extenders. Right. But, well, with the but, meal extender bundle, you also get a bonus yes. as well. You receive two boxes of each flavor of the Frontier Bites yes. that we all love so much. And that's macadamia pineapple coconut, pecan cherry cinnamon, almond blueberry lemon, and they are wonderful. They're only eight ingredients in so these. You're getting things. one year, eight months of food mm-hmm. so for $550, and you're getting this set of uh, two boxes of. And six each, pouches. Oh, two boxes of each flavor each Frontier box. Bites. So call 1 888 988 1588 or write us today at P.O. Box. 7330 Branson, Missouri, 65615, or go to the website, jimbakershow.com. <laughs> More well, than amazing. next template, could, yes. can yeah. we all be okay. in it, do you think? Well, let me show you something. Well, we're kind of in it. I believe you can be in it in two ways. But here, let me, let me, <laughs> okay. we, and we get to the last part, which is the message to us. So, let, But here, 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 this, this is, this okay. is crazy. This is crazy. Okay. If I may use that word, it's in the yes. Bible. Okay. <laughs> okay. It sure is. Could it be that God's people are even in this template? And here it is. There's a man in the template called Jehanadab. Now, this is what it says. After Jehu left there, he's on his chariot ride. He's, he's bring, he came upon Jehanadab, son of Rechab, who was on his way to meet him. Now, who was Jehanadab? Jehanadab is the leader of a people called the Rechabites. The Rechabites are followers of God. They are against the corruption of Ahab and Jezebel. They keep themselves separate. They abstain from things. We read about them in Jeremiah, actually. Now, think about the believers, first of all, in America, mm-hmm. trying to keep themselves separate from all the, 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 the evil and the darkness, uh, Trump grieved and, trying to, and against this. Well, li- the amazing thing, listen to the, what the commentaries say about Jehonadab. Okay. They call him a member of, they call him a religious conservative. Uh, wow. Literally. You'll see, they call him a member of a conservative sect. They call him a religious conservative. Religi- he's representing the religious conservatives. Okay? Now, and here, here's what, a, here's what a, one of the commentaries says. Elisha and Jehonadab appear to have stood morally apart from their generation. The days were evil, and he was not at home in them. He was surrounded by the favored nation of God, but they had sunk, as God said they would, to the level of the nations among whom they dwelt. Now, here's another commentary here. When Jehu appeared like a great revivalist in the midst of evil, commissioned by God to punish Israel for their sin, Jehonadab may have thought, here comes the change I have longed for. Think of the religious conservatives and Donald Trump. (laughs) Now the worship of Jehovah will prosper. Now the people will learn God's ways. The revolt of Jehu, now here's another commentary. This is not me, this commentary. The revolt of Jehu was not only politically inspired, behind him was the conservative faction (laughs) led by Jehonadab. Accordingly, here, here's another one from a commentary. Accordingly, Jehonadab was extremely interested in Jehu's reputed desire to purge the nation from its heathenism. Perhaps he hoped that in Jehu a sense of national repentance and longing for the God of Israel would now take place. My good, how can you be any more exact? My goodness. They Absolutely. were firm, and here's one. They were, they, were, they were conservative, religious conservative. Now, you remember this year, and you remember, well, there were crucial meetings between Donald Trump and the religious conservatives, leaders. Remember that? And now look what happens at the template. Jehu greets Jehonadab and says, are you in accord with me as I am with you? In other words, I'm with you people. Are you going to be with me? Does that sound like this year? It sure does. I am, said Jehonadab. So the religious conservatives say yes. If so, said Jehu, give me your hand. So he did. And Jehu helped him up into the chariot. Jehu said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Then he had him ride in the chariot. Hmm. Now think about this. You know, now, now the, way Je- the way Jehu drove, it was a crazy race. <laughs> <laughs> but the conservatives have to say, well, am I going to go in this chariot? I'm not going to go in this chariot. Yeah. <laughs> Back and forth. It's exactly. I mean, God also has a sense of humor too here. Oh, yeah. But they believe that the greater good, they were concerned. You know, you could see there's concern. You, there's a, you, you, it's implied that John is concerned about Jehu. What's his motives? What's, and that's in the commentaries. What's going on? You know, what, you know is, it, is, it, is it really for the Lord and all that? But, but, Jehonadab, he, the ultimate thing is that 
they see the evil coming, that if, if, that if this continues, if things continue under Jezebel and under Jehoram, it's gonna, it's, it's a, it's gonna, it's, we're, gonna, we're gonna be finished. So he goes with him, and he goes through, and, and so on now, the, and now something else, notice this. Interesting, Jehonadab doesn't join Jehu at the beginning of his race, only towards the end, to the latter part. Most of the religious conservatives did not join Donald Trump until the end, the latter part of the race, right. just like in here. Right. And so they're riding together to the capital city, <laughs> to the capital city. Maybe. So what happens now? What happens? Jehu comes to Jezreel. King Jehoram is there in the chariot. And it says Jehoram, Jehoram gets, it, takes the chariot, goes out to Jehu. He says, Are you, have you come in peace? Jehu answers, how can there be peace? as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel abound. Notice they meet up in Jezreel at the same place where Elijah prophesied to Ahab, where Ahab and Jezebel committed their sin and killed this innocent man and his family. So there, that's where Elijah said, well, God is going to end your house, and now it's coming true. It was delayed. Remember, it was delayed. Ahab, Ahab asked for mercy. It was delayed until now. And so here's what, so it all goes back to the sins of the house of Ahab here. Now, so here it comes. And now notice something. Even though Jehu is confronting Jehoram, he, his real fight is with Jezebel. He says, how can I, Jehoram, be, as long as Jezebel's there? So in the midst of, this, of this, this showdown this year, it was, again, Jehu and Jezebel. And notice something. He confronts, you know, Jehu is confronting Jezebel and Ahab over their sins. It's all about that. What did Donald Trump do on national television? He confronted the Clintons over, not, he confronted over the killing of the unborn, the sin of Ahab and Jezebel, the killing of babies. And, and, and Hillary Clinton defended it on television, if you remember that. That's right. I remember. And not only that, not only that, what else did, what else did he, uh, you know, Donald Trump also started speak, he started speaking about the sins of Bill Clinton, you know, which is what Jehu <laughs> does here. Jehu, because what happens is, Jehu now brings an end to the reign of Jehoram. And, he, and, he, and then he says something very interesting. He says, he says to his, his charioteer, his, his guy, he says, don't you remember when we were right by Ahab? Because he served under Ahab. And he says, don't you remember when the prophet Elijah prophesied on the same ground that this would come for the sins of Ahab? And so here he's reminding of the sins, which is what Donald Trump did too. Notice something else, even this. Jehu was originally, he was not against Ahab and Jezebel. He was originally for Baal. He was defending. He was their person. He was the commander of Jehoram and undoubtedly of Ahab. He was right by Ahab. So originally, Donald Trump was not against abortion. He was for abortion. That's right. But then he turned. Yes, he did. Jehu was originally defending the kingdom of Baal, and now he's going to overturn the kingdom of Baal. Wow. Just like in the temple. Wow, 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 wow. And so, Incredible. so he makes his way now. Jehu makes his way to Jezebel. Jezebel comes out on the balcony, famous scene. She puts on makeup and all this stuff and taunts and sarcastically says, have you come here? He says, you, you, you murderer, you, you, you Zimri. Calls him by the guy who, overthrown, who overthrew the other one who only lasted seven days. So he's, she's taunting him. And that's when he calls for her judgment and her downfall. Famous thing, everybody knows it. Je the end of Jezebel's reign. So think about something now. By ending, by Jezebel's reign, by Jezebel being defeated, that means that Jehoram's legacy is overturned. Because if Jezebel <laughs> continued, even though Jehoram, and if the other children of, a, the other sons and heirs of Ahab continued, which Jehab would judge, then the legacy of Ahab and Jezebel and Jehoram would have continued. But because, because Jezebel is out of the picture of, the, of this defeated in here, then the legacy of Jehoram comes to an end. Jehu will now end, so Jehu, so Trump will, by the defeat of the Democratic candidate, Obama's legacy was overturned. Yeah. Now, and he immediately started undoing executive orders. Now, not all, not all of it has been overturned, and I want, there's an amazing, amazing word for here of caution, an amazing prophetic word for us here, which I'll get to, but here, so here that happens, and and what does Jehu do after that? Then Jehu becomes the next king. You have Jeho after Jehoram, Obama, you have Jehu, Trump. He becomes the next king. He assumes the kingship. Now let me tell you one more thing as we bring this home. Okay, one more thing. 
There's a template called the template of the 12th year, and that is this. When does all this take place? When does Jehu rise up? When does the, the chariots come? When does Jehoram's reign end? When does Jezebel, when does all this happen? It all happens in the 12th year of Jehoram. It all happens. Well, what do we see before? If you look at the beginning of Jehoram, you look at his rise, 2004, five, go fast forward 12 years. It takes everything to the year 2016 and then January, 2017. That is the year when all these things happen. When Jehu rises up, Jehu defeats Jezebel. When Jehoram's reign ends, all these things. So it would put us in this exact period when it all took place, the exact timing. But something else, something else happened amazing. Around the world, if you remember, the world in Syria, they're actually stand. There's not many, I don't know if there, how much there exists this in the world, but there is one place in the world, there is one there was, a temp there was a temple of Baal that was standing across the world. Actually, more than one, standing in the Syrian city of Palmyra. It was standing for almost 2,000 years. Okay, but in the summer of 2015, the temple of Baal was destroyed. Now, gigantic event, it was destroyed. And that's actually linked to the harbinger of that arch, that uh, veil that appeared in America, but we won't even go into that now. Right. But wow. this is gigantic. Now think about something. When Jehu rose up in that year, when Jehu rose up in the 12th year, something specifically happened. He, what happened was the temple of Baal was destroyed. Mm. He was the destroyer of the temple of Baal. And in the same year of his rise, of Trump's rise, the temple of Baal was destroyed. Wow. That is gigantic. The same, I mean, after two that is gigantic. Wow. Now, Huge. Now, <laughs> Huge. That's powerful. Huh. <laughs> and there's more. I'm, I can only do Shaking. so. Shaking. Um, ah. But now, but let, me, now let me bring it home. Okay, let mm. me bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. We're celebrating our birthday, our anniversary. 56 years. 56 ministry. years mm -hmm. of, as my anniversary of, of preaching yes. the gospel. Yes. So I've been preaching for 56 years. And... And it's always on the 4th of July. Food for Health and the folks that do develop this generating system, which is totally the greatest system in the world. And uh, they call it the Independence Day Complete Generator Special. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about these deals is that there's financing available. But uh, we have the $4,200 total unit and then, of course, includes generator one and generator two. This is the auxiliary unit. It connects together with this amazing, huge cord. Look at that heavy duty. That is what connects these two units. This is over 300 times more powerful than our last unit was. So what we're going to do today, just for the next few days, during the, from now to the 4th of July celebration that week, we're going to give you a couple bonuses. So if you want the huge, this is the biggest generator that's, that we know of, of its kind, that you can buy, but it charges with these solar panels. You can literally keep your refrigerator running a few hours a day to keep your food from spoiling. And it can run most wash machines now. With this double power, it can do so many things. And it's triple power, Pastor. We went from 600 watt hours to adding 1,200 more. So it's a total of 1,800. So it's actually, like you said, 300% yeah. or three times more <laughs> run times. Yeah. We have the base unit, yes. which you can get for $2,000. And that's just this unit here. With the base unit of $2,000, you get a panel. Yes. You get this unit, yes. and you can run power stuff. You can run all kinds of stuff. Oh, yes, all absolutely. Running. In fact, if you get this unit for $2,000, this is the base unit right there. You get that. You get the cord that goes to it, solar panel. Yes. You get the solar panel. But then only this special time at the 4th of July week and all during up to the 4th of July week, you will get the bonus of a case of black bean burgers. Yes, sir. In those yes, last sir. 25 years. Oh, absolutely. You get 
What else? We've got a second solar panel in today. So you're getting two yes, solar sir. panels. Yes, sir. And finally, we've got this 1,000 lumen tactical flashlight. That's a high power. That's yes. a retail $80 flashlight it is. that it comes is. with it. I wish everybody could have one of these. I have one now at my house, and I love having it. This is 300 times more powerful than anything we've ever offered before. The complete generator. The complete yes. set, $4,200. You get everything on this table. You also get two solar panels instead right. of one. That's right. With the two panels, you can charge this up. It'll actually go to three panels. And we can actually add a fourth panel, Pastor. Yes, sir. You're kidding. Yeah, but you can daisy chain them all together, four panels in a row. So, but you got, you double right now yeah, you, the sun power. Yes, so it charges twice as fast, basically, that's, that's exactly than, right. than one panel. So you get today, for our birthday celebration, you're going to get two panels with it. And you can get financing for this, too. And you get a bean burger, burger yes, box. Yes, sir. But now I get to give you yes. the crank. Yes. And this is so if the sun's not shining, it's raining outside, you can crank and make electricity by hand. And in the case of, a, of an emergency. Easy. It okay. really is. Yes. And then you get this amazing machine right here. This, you can cook with this. Absolutely. Yeah, that's our 600-watt microwave, Pastor Jim. And that, that works extremely well. It works with this machine. But, Pastor Jim, I do want to let you know that there's only 200 of those in. So that the first 200 people that they call, call right now, they can get that. If the first 200 bonus. people get a gen, get this special microwave yes, as well, okay? Yes, and then the flashlight comes with this unit, yes, too. Yes, sir. You get the case for the... Yeah. For the generator. The EMP bag, yes, sir. Anybody who has generators at home and doesn't have this 12-volt blanket, they need that 12-volt blanket. That is a must, especially if you live where it's cold. And then the LED light, that's... Uh, Those are these. These are little three-watt light bulbs. There's a three-light stringer, we call them. I call them three-light stringer, but they're all individually controlled with this little switch right here. So you can have them all or you can have none. Yeah, so there's... There's three of the lights, yes, sir. which retails for $80. Yes, sir. Yes. So we have the 12-volt electric blanket. We have the three-light kit, the LED lights. We have the EMP bag, Generation 3. Yes, we have 25-foot extension cord to the solar panel. We have the new and improved uh, carry cart. Yes, that's you, back here, yes. Boy. And you're saving 3386 You're giving $3,386 value bonuses in, yes. in this offer right now. Yes. This is the best bundle I'm, I'm aware of that, that we've ever done. So it's $4,200 for this amazing power and to have electricity to never be in the dark. So call 1-888-988-1588 or go to the website jimbakershow.com. Now, even the Bible commentaries have a hard time with Jehu because he's such a different figure. He's controversial. They don't know what to make of him. Even the Bible commentaries to this day. Mm -hmm. And they say things like, you know, but the fact is whatever one thinks of Donald Trump, he was used against all odds to stop an agenda that it would lead to the encroachment of religious liberty, mm -hmm. the indoctrination of our children, the end of really religious freedom, the persecution of God's people. What did what did what did Jehu's victory mean? It meant there was a reprieve in Israel, right? It meant that the persecution, the state stop, stopped for a time. It meant that the worship of Baal was going to stop for a time, at least as a state thing. The, the, the killing of babies, he, he, was, he was, that Jehu undoes that. We'll see what happens here. And that's all part of what's happening here. We'll see what happens. We've got to pray. But the thing is that no person is the answer, you know, of course. And again, we share this very important the election is not the answer. The election is a window for the answer. Mm -hmm. The answer is, has to do with us and God. So Jehu, what happened? What's the, what's the, Jehu did end the state worship of Baal. But here's the warning. We have to pray. Mm -hmm. It says he didn't depart from the ways of Jeroboam. So we have to pray. Now here, let me say this. We have to pray because some things have been overturned already. Amazing. In the first, the first weeks of, the first days of, of Trump, he, 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 with abortion, he did it right away. But then there have been other things on some issues where we have to pray about, okay? So the answer is not, the answer is this is a window. 
Mm -hmm. This is a window. And part of it, it was a window for revival. That's what, is what we're talking about. And that's why we're giving the warning. And giving the warning that if we don't make use of this, yeah. then, then, and what happens, you know, the, here the commentaries say we must, here, this is what commentaries say about Jehu. Jehu is exactly one of those men whom we are compelled to recognize, commentary, not for what is good or great in themselves, but as instruments for destroying evil and preparing the way for good. The way for good is revival. The way for good is revival. And, and the last word that I'll have in a second, but, but if we can, I believe it's, we have a short clip of, I think it's about a minute of words to Trump that was at the, from that same inaugural prayer breakfast on the day of his inauguration. You are about to become the most powerful man on earth. Remember always that it is the Almighty who lifts up kings to the throne. It is the Almighty who removes them. Your authority comes not from man, but from God, the King above all kings. Therefore, submit your life to his authority, and by his authority you shall lead. Do justly love mercy and walk humbly with your God. Your life has been a vessel of your will. Now it must become a vessel of his will and his purposes. Walk in his footsteps. Walk, seek his righteousness. Follow the leading of his voice. Uphold his ways and you shall be upheld. Keep his word and you shall be kept. Give honor to his name above all names and your name shall be honored. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you will arise and you will shine, and the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. Yes. Oh, Lord, we pray that. We pray that for our president. Yes, that's awesome. We have to pray. Yes. We have to pray. That's what it's about. Yes. And here's the last part for now, and that is this. Uh, be, you know, there's one more piece of the puzzle that I didn't touch, and that is crucial for us. Before all these things played out that in this last year, the Lord opened the door for me to speak, as you said you were talking, Lori, where the Lord opened the door on Capitol Hill. Yeah. And I spoke to leaders and members of Congress by God's grace. And that time I was led specifically to speak about Baal and God and Elijah and America at the crossroads between God and Baal. Remember that? I mean, that, that, was, that was just led. I didn't, now, I didn't realize it here, but that was right. That was... The, the day before, well, this part I realized, the day before I said that, the Supreme Court heard the case that would decide marriage. A few days before that, Hillary Clinton made that statement, right. deep-seated religious beliefs must be changed. And then a few days before she ran for it, and then all these things happened. But the, the, what is the missing, the missing factor here is Elijah. And the, these are to be, if these are the days of Baal and Ahab, what this is telling us, Ahab, Baal, Jehoram, Jezebel, then these must also be the days of Elijah. Yes. And who is Eli Where's Eli where do we find Elijah? Elijah is to be us. Elijah is to be you. Elijah, we are to be the Elijahs. That's what it's telling us. This is our part of the template now. Elijah, and this is the revelation, that the time of wavering is over, the time of being a gray Christian is over, the time of compromise is over, the time of, 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 of making deals with the darkness is over. The revelation is these are the, the days of Elijah. We must become the Elijahs of the day. Amen. And that is, and that means, this is our template. That means that if we will take up the mantle of Elijah. Now, now Elisha did it. He, he, he wasn't anything, but he took it up. And God, if we will take up the mantle of Elijah, God will anoint us with authority, with boldness. We are to now live in the power of his might. This is our day. This is our time. We were to be single-minded, unafraid, to stand up against the darkness. God is real. God wants us confident. He wants us with conviction. He wants us to go all out or don't go at all. Elijah wasn't back and forth. He was single-minded. He, he, he had his things, but he was single-minded. God wants us, and if we will do this right here, right now, he's asking, God is saying, where is my Elijah? Where are my Elijahs? If these are the Elijahs, then let us resolve, let us commit that we will once and for all become the Elijahs of the day. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Powerful. Thank you, Rabbi, oh, for sharing. Thank you, my, Rabbi. This has been amazing Incredible. today. Thank you. Would Incredible. You, could you yeah. pray for sure. us and pray with the Talit? Because this is Bible. Someday we'll just have you teach <laughs> oh, on this again. Oh, there's a whole thing on that. Yes, there's a lot. You know, yeah. because... You have been a blessing to us. Oh, like And thank you for thank coming you. by your my blessing. hillbilly yeah. home here. My, my, my blessing. <laughs> and spending these 
hours of your prayer and hearing from God and your oh. bringing it to us today. Uh, I love you so much. Uh, likewise, I love you too. Uh, I just, Thank you. your friendship means so much. Likewise, wow. it does, it does to me. I, I truly feel at home, you know, after that first time here, <laughs> and I love being here, and I, you're in my heart all the time, and I pray for you, you know. We Thank pray you. for you. Guys, yeah. And I'm going to ask the rabbi to bless yes. you and pray for you, yes. lead you to Christ, whatever you feel yeah. led, rabbi, it be just as you get ready to climb on that airplane. <laughs> yes. Father, we just praise you that you are Lord of all. Lord, we praise you that you are the king above all kings and that, Lord, nothing happens without your hand. You are in control and above all things, you are on the throne. And we thank you for your mighty hand and that you never cease to move for the sake of your people. Lord, we praise you. Father, we ask, Lord, we, we acknowledge there has been a window opened. Lord, by your grace, by your mercy, despite ourselves, despite the people of the window, Lord, you have opened up a window. And Lord, we acknowledge, Lord, that the answer is not the window, but this is a window for us to move, to rise up, to shine, to, Lord, to spread the gospel, to be bold, to be uncompromised, to put aside any entanglement and any sin that has compromised our walk, that we could, Lord, be unhindered, uncompromised in every way, that we might rise to the hour, Lord. Lord, we ask that there would be revival in this land. Yes. Let there be revival in the coast. Let there be revival in the heartland. Let there be revival in Washington, D.C. Let there be revival in the Capitol. Let there be revival in the White House. Lord, let there be revival among the youth, the young generation, Lord. They need you, and we need them to find you, Lord. So, Father, we pray for America. Lord, we pray for everyone who has spoken. I pray for every leader I spoke of that they would come to know you. Father, I pray, we pray for those who are against us and against the word of God and against the people of God. Lord, we pray for those who would consider themselves our enemies. Save them, Lord. Just like you touched, uh, Lord, Jane Roe, Father. Lord, save, 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 Lord. We ask, Lord, let the revival begin, Lord, with us in the church. Lord, we don't only pray for revival. We commit that we will actually finally live in revival. We will, Father, we would put that thing aside that has to be taken from our life. And we will live, Lord. We will repent where it's needed. We will repent of our evil ways. We will seek your face and pray and humble ourselves. Lord, we will rise to become the people you have called us to be. So, Lord, I ask your hand and your power and your spirit and your anointing on not only everyone here who is open to your will and open to your purposes, but, Lord, touch everyone who is listening now. Everyone who is seeing this now, Lord, anoint them as they come to you, as they commit their lives to you, as they commit their walks to you, whether they have known you or whether they have not known you. Lord, Lord, anoint them as they follow you now. Raise up your Elijahs. Raise up your Elishas. Raise up your Davids. Raise up your Esthers. Raise up your Pauls and your Peters. Raise up, Lord, your anointed ones, Father. Raise up an army, O Lord. Raise up a army of your mighty ones, Father, and let there be revival in this land, no matter what it takes, no matter what it means, let there be revival, no matter what, Lord, let there be revival. Have your way with the president, and Lord, guide him, and Lord, make him do your will, Father. Anoint, Father, and Lord, we ask, Lord, we commit today, not, we don't only pray for revival today, we commit to revival in our own lives lives and we praise you lord we ask now anoint us as we go forward lord that we would as you said kumi ori kiva orech uchvod adonai alayas zarach arise and shine for our light is come and the glory of the lord has risen upon us in the name of yeshua jesus the king of kings and all his people say amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you will lift up your hands for the Lord, I pray this blessing, and wherever you are, if you're at home, do the same. 
This is the blessing that God himself wrote the words to. It's, it's a, there's a power in it. He said, when you do this, you will place my name upon them. And this was given to the sons of Aaron. That's the house I'm from. So it's my blessing to give it to you. Who are, It was given to God's people. You are the people of God. And God's will is to bless you. So here in the language of the Bible, the blessing. Yivrechecham Adonai Vayishmerei 